They call it the Razor Blade Stealth 13, and here are the benchmarks going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Now, first and foremost, we're going to dive into the build quality, color gamut range, and usability of the laptop as we make our way through the video. I do like the matte black finish. However, one thing that the Razor Blade series is famous for is fingerprints. So right off the bat, be aware of that. You're going to want to keep like a microfiber cloth with you to always be kind of cleaning it up. I like to keep a nice clean laptop, and this makes it a bit of a struggle. But obviously, that's just more of a user experience thing, more of a visual thing, but that is something to point out right off the bat. This is a thin and light laptop. I love the build and the aesthetic of it. It just, it looks great. It's got great rounded edges. The bottom cover fits very nicely into the side panels. They've done a great job with that. And so I think overall, the build and assembly of this laptop is spot on. Something that's pretty interesting that you, that I want to point out is this foot here, this rubber foot is actually lower than this one. What that means is it's gonna pick the laptop up off of the desk just slightly to allow air to flow under the laptop chassis and get sucked in to those fans, which will then push the air out the back of the chassis. So we have two fans along the bottom and then a fan here right along the back of the chassis. Great cooling for this laptop. I was very impressed with the 4K video edit. It stayed below 70 degrees Celsius during the 4K video edit. So it's a cool, quiet laptop with that i7 1165G7. I have 16 gigs of RAM in this one, and I think it's a 512 SSD if I'm not mistaken. Um, now let's go ahead and open and close the lid real quick, easily with one hand, and then let's check out that screen flex. Not much screen flex, a very firm screen. The aluminum chassis holds that screen very strong. And then of course, because of the singular hinge, there's no screen flex at the bottom. Now, before we dive into the interior, let's go ahead and check out the ports. On this laptop, we have a USB type A, headphone jack, USB type C, and this is a Thunderbolt equipped laptop being that it is Intel. And on the other side, we have another USB type C and a USB type A. Go ahead and get this thing opened up and check out the interior speakers along the top of the chassis for a great audio experience. And here's a quick sample of that now. And of course, regarding the webcam, here's a quick sample of me testing out the webcam. Here's a sample of the webcam from the Razer Blade Stealth. It's a little on the orange side, well, kind of a lot on the orange side, and then of course you can hear the audio as well right now. One thing I want to point out about this laptop is the abundant use of the keyboard deck in order to put a big trackpad. I mean, the trackpad literally edges right up to the bezel of the laptop, which I think is a great move personally. Some people might be concerned if it drops, it could damage the trackpad, which is a valid concern, but overall it gives you a lot of nice space as a creator for the trackpad. And it's a nice quiet trackpad. It doesn't have a loud clicky sound. Uh, it's very responsive. And overall, I really enjoy this trackpad. Moving on to the keyboard, I like the cluster. It's neatly assembled. You have a full size shift key, your toggle switches. The backspace key is a smaller key. I don't love that design, um, but I can, you know, give a little leeway being that I like the nice organized cluster of keys. One thing is the key press. The key press is a short to medium key press. If you like that, you are in good hands. And the keys are more of a hardened plastic material. Um, they're not that personal favorite of mine, that soft touch material, but they feel very nice under your fingers. And here's a quick audio sample of me using the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear how it sounds. Last note regarding the keyboard, you do have an RGB backlit keyboard, which is nice for some customization. You can do all kinds of different colors. So it's a nice little feature on the keyboard. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of this laptop, I'm gonna put links in the description below. If you do use those links to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. That keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, regarding color gamut range, you can see that coming up on the screen right now. This is not the brightest screen, but it does have some good color accuracy and color gamut range. Without further ado, let's get into the performance benchmarks. And first and foremost, we're gonna start off with the simulated benchmarks, looking at Cinebench R20, Geekbench Single Core, and Multi-Core.
as you can see, this thing really packs a punch in Geekbench single core. And so for single core apps, we're gonna see good performance out of this laptop. And that takes me on to After Effects. For a thin and light mobile processor with a GTX 1650 Ti Max-Q, which is a slightly smaller four gig VRAM dedicated GPU, this laptop handles After Effects fairly well, hanging around even the Legion 5i, which has a dedicated GPU and an H series processor. So this thing packs a punch for a small package. Now moving forward into video editing, you can see the export times coming up on the screen now. For 4K full quality playback, you can see it only had roughly 800 dropped frames out of a project containing 16,177. But as we move to DaVinci Resolve, we're still gonna have good playback, but the Intel processor isn't super optimized for DaVinci Resolve, so we're seeing some longer export times in Resolve. Now, regarding Photoshop, this laptop definitely packs a punch and it actually beats out the Ryzen mobile processors and the MacBook Pro M1. So if you're considering a laptop for Photoshop, you would be in good consideration with the Razer Blade Stealth. Punch for punch, this is a great on-the-go laptop for your creator needs. I wouldn't exactly pursue this laptop for 3D modeling. I did not include those benchmarks because they were wah wah not good. So if you're considering video editing, After Effects, or design or photo editing work, this is a great pick. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next video.